Hello everyone, uh, today we'll start a small video series, uh, hopefully, <laughs> that's what uh, I hope it to become, a small video series uh, where people can learn Perl and also use it in the field of bioinformatics mainly. Perl is uh, mostly used uh, in the field of bioinformatics because of its ease of use and its uh, powerful text and string operations. Uh, like you know string replacement, string search and other string manipulations um, and it's also very useful uh, uh, for you know manipulating uh, text files and converting different formats and other stuff you can also do it uh, using the awk language from Unix command line but it's uh, the one advantage of learning Perl is you not only learn to do string manipulations and when you when you become used to it you keep on uh, learning a more advanced uh, programming language uh, where you can develop uh, GUIs and uh, uh, and different applications standalone applications um, so uh, without further ado oh oh uh, forgot to mention uh, I'll be working on the Unix based uh, uh, machine uh, mostly Mac and um, most people do work, prefer to work um, in Unix uh, based machines uh, when using Perl. And um, if you want to download uh, a Perl for Windows, uh, you can download it from activestate.com. Uh, but I strongly recommend to start learning Perl in Unix environment uh, because of its, you know, uh, it was. Uh, was it or no? Never mind. So I, I strongly recommend to use it um, on on Unix based. Start learning on Unix based machines. So uh, let's check if I have Perl first of all in my uh, machine. To do that, I can just type which Perl, and it shows me uh, that I have a Perl at this particular path. And uh, for for just uh, like a quickie. Um, in most Unix based uh, systems the path are separated by forward slash but in Windows it's separated by backward slash so if you're trying if you wrote a script in uh, in Windows and trying to uh, do the same trying to execute that script in Unix it may it may show a lot of problems so uh, there, uh, we, we'll come back to that later so I have Pro on my machine here and um, uh, let's check also the version of Perl I'm having. Uh, you can just check the version of Perl by just typing Perl minus V. And I have a Perl version 5.10. So uh, th I think that's a new and stable version. Uh, most people, older Unix systems have 5.8, if I'm not wrong, 5.8.8 too. So uh, let's start uh, by writing a simple script. Um, to just print hello world, say hi to everyone and stuff. So you can you can do that on a command line, Perl minus e print hello world. So as you can see, minus e means execute, and I'm just saying execute whatever the command is between the single quotes, and uh, I'm saying to print hello world, which is in in which is bounded by the double quotes and yeah it does it does print the hello world but it prints after printing hello world it resumes the normal bash uh, prompt uh, so to avoid that or to to avoid the cluster I can just type uh, print a new line you can you are escaping the n character which Paul recognizes as a new to to print a new line so I do that and and press uh, press return uh, then the uh, Hello world is printed after hello world a new line is printed and the bash prompt resumes. So this is a simple way of, of uh, executing a simple Perl script to the command line. By the way these are called Perl one-liners uh, in the Perl world where you just write a small script and, and, and execute in the command line rather than uh, writing a, uh, following a syntax and writing a script in an editor. So my favorite editor is Emacs and I use it uh, for most of the time I feel it comfortable I started using it when I started learning Perl so uh, why don't we go ahead and try to learn uh, to write a small script which prints hello world 
uh, rather than on on the command line. So I'll open up. I'll go to the desktop and I'll open up uh, first Perl.pl. All the Perl programs end with the .pl extensions, and all similarly, all Python programs end with .dot .py extension. So and um, this is my Emacs editor, and uh, so let's start and specify uh, the path of Perl. This is common to all Perl scripts where you mention where the actual Perl interpreter is located and this is called the shebang and uh, the hash and followed by the exclamatory mark is called the shebang and this is called the shebang line. The, uh, this line may differ depending upon the location of your Perl interpreter. For some Unix systems it's user local bin Perl for, for most of the Unix based systems, user bin Perl. So, uh, the normal style of my coding is I just indicate, you know, who is actually writing the script, first name, last name, you know, some comments. By the way, the comments start with hash on, on in, in Perl scripts. And it's also, you know, the irony that the first shebang line starts with hash too, but that's the way it is. And uh, so this is just my style of uh, uh, you know coding scripts in Perl. I just open up with the shebang line and just indicate who actually is the author of the script uh, with you know indicating my first name and stuff and actually what what the program does. So this is my first program and what does it do it just prints okay so uh, now we use the print command to print hello world and followed by new line I escape slash n which Paul recognizes new line and and semicolon uh, all the statements in Perl end with a semicolon and then exit. You don't need the semicolon on the exit because that's obvious, right? It's the last line, so you don't need you don't need the semicolon saying that this is the end of the statement. So it's end of a file. So why don't we save and Perl first Perl dot pl and that's our first program. Boom. So that's a simple and sweet introduction to Perl there, printing just hello world. And uh, let's go ahead and do learn about the variables and uh, data structures, different type of data structure, basic data structures and, and other stuff. So why, would, why don't we go and edit our first Perl.pl file. So uh, to be sure that uh, when you're trying to uh, compile and execute the pro Perl actually compiles and uh, executes the program at the same time when you say Perl your program name. So while it compiles you can actually ask Perl to look for any syntax or, or warnings by mentioning use warnings and use strict. So b by doing this Perl actually looks for says hey you got to follow the perfect syntax of Perl you can just write or type anything so why don't we just remove this double quote here and try to execute the program and it should say yeah can find the string terminator uh, double quote before the end of line so that's that's the way uh, that's really useful and that's actually the recommended way to use uh, to write Perl scripts to save you a lot of you know debugging later when you when you you know write like a thousand lines of code, so so you generally use use warnings and use tricks. This is like my general. This goes with my every every script I generally write, and also there are different ways uh, to to you know this style of coding may differ with different you know when you're writing a Perl module, you you can actually follow a different way. 
to actually say ask Perl to write stuff or, or warn you. So once the uh, so once that's done, where we you know just see if Perl's spitting out any syntax errors and stuff, why don't we just go and declare our first uh, variable, the scalar variable? So dollar uh, the scalar variables are prefixed by dollar in Perl, and the variable name maybe x or my variable or just the first variable. And by the way, you have to declare the space of this uh, variable or the namespace of this variable by saying my. When you say my dollar first variable, that's the way of saying that this variable belongs locally here in the script. So my variable is equal to, let's say, how are you doing? Note here, I... Um, I have different quotes here. Here I mention hello world between two double quotes and here I mention how are you doing between two single quotes. Uh, we'll get to that difference later while we add more stuff. So I say my variable, my first variable is called how are you doing print dollar first variable. So this prints the value. So you're assigning how are you doing into first variable. So it stores the value how are you doing in first variable when you say print dollar first variable it prints the value of that stored in that first variable so let's execute that oh apparently i have some error there yeah see that I mentioned the the new line did not encompass the new line between the quotes so that should fix the error and yeah it prints hello world and then it prints the value of the variable how are you doing since we did not include ask Perl to print new line it's it resumed the command prompt as soon as it print as soon as, as soon as the program is finished so let's open this up uh, open this 